Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to my WordPress problem solved. This is part two in which I'm going to go over some common issues people have with their WordPress websites and explain how to accomplish a lot of different things. Today, I'm going to show you how to create a static home page, how to use the more button. I'm going to go through permalink, security, how to upgrade, create a favicon, how to forward from one website to another, and a whole bunch of other things. One of the number one things people want to do with WordPress is to create a static, regular, old website. This is how you do it. Go over to settings in your sidebar, click on reading, and you'll see here, it says right here, front page displays, and it gives you the option of your latest posts or a static page. If you click on a static page in this radio button and then select whatever page you want it to be to be your home page then you will have a static home page and then of course you would want to cr also click and create the page that is going to display any articles that you post but you don't necessarily have to do anything and if you do create a post page leave that page pages content completely empty. Another issue, a lot of people want to display more than just 10 posts on their blog pages. Well, you can see here I set this to 15. And of course, don't forget to hit save changes after you make all of those changes. One thing I see people who are new at designing WordPress websites is they do not know what the more tag is. Hence, they write this great big giant long article. This actually isn't that long. But they write an article that's 1,500 pages long, then they have their next post is another 1,500 pages long, and so on and so on. People want to be able to very quickly get to the content that is important to them and find the articles that are most important to them. How do you do that? You create a way to put a post that is abbreviated on your main homepage. So all you need to do is click inside of your content, say, okay, that's a reasonable length for me to display this post and then click this button right here which is the insert more tag if you do that you can see here if somebody does click on that specific page it's going to show all of your content but if they go to your home page you can see here there are abbreviations of these gigantic articles and if you've ever been to my website you see my articles are massive and where you put the insert more tag you'll you will instead see read the rest of this entry and it provides a real easy way for people to go to your website and see if there's anything on it that is of interest to them. Next up, how to cut and paste. That sounds like something that is very easy to do. Guess what, it's not. If you are cutting and pasting from a Microsoft doc file and you copy it directly into WordPress and hit publish, it's gonna be full of all kinds of nasty tags, bad text, it's gonna be a total mess. Also, often if you copy and paste from somebody else's website, you're gonna get the same exact thing. What you wanna do, if it is a non-Microsoft doc, you wanna click on this little folder button here with a T on it, paste your text into that box, and then insert. That is how you want to insert information into your WordPress page if it's copied from somewhere else. Again, if it's a Microsoft doc file, you wanna instead click on the folder with the W and paste it into there and hit insert. Another issue that I see a lot of people making, if you do not have something called permalinks set up on your website, this is what all of your pages are going to look like to other people. As you can see here, it says thewebdesignersite.com p equals 32. Wouldn't it be great if all of your directories had keywords in them? You can set it up that way so that instead of just having that P like we saw before, if somebody clicks on one of your pages, they're going to instead see their keywords in the directory itself. Search engines love this. So how do you set that up? Go back into your dashboard again, click on settings, then you scroll over here, click on permalinks, and then I would personally choose month and name. That way you're gonna get the date, everything's gonna be sorted nice into directories, and then you can put your keywords right here. This is a fabulous way to boost a lot of attention to your website for search engines. Next up, there's a lot of hacker attacks going on right now with WordPress websites. I'm gonna show you now the tools I use in regards to plugins to protect my website. And ever since I installed these plugins, I've had a lot less hacks. So I'm gonna come down here to my plugin section click on install. What do I use? I use antivirus, which is by Sergi Mueller. And what this does is it protects you from people putting uh, malicious code in your comment section. That's what this specific plugin does for you. It's real easy to set up. You basically just click download and activate and it works. 
And the other tool that I know has blocked people from doing malicious things on my website is WordPress Firewall. What this does is it blocks people from attacking your text boxes and putting malicious PHP code into your website and hacking their way in. What this does is it actually will only allow those people who are coming from your IP address to be able to change anything on the website. So that's WordPress Firewall and that's by SEO Egghead. Another thing that people don't know how to do is how to upgrade WordPress and also upgrade plugins. Again, I've on purpose left some of these things fouled up. Let me show you how to upgrade plugins. You just click on plugins. You know one of them needs upgraded if it's red and a three there. And it's gonna show you in this yellow box that this needs to be upgraded. It's real easy to upgrade. Just click on upgrade automatically. And then you wanna sit here and wait. It says attempting reactivation of plugin. Don't jump to another page, sit and wait. It says plugin reactivated successfully. Great, now you know that works. If your website does get hacked or occasionally your dashboard will get completely mashed up and mangled, what you wanna do is reinstall WordPress. This is how you do that. Click on tools in your left sidebar. See upgrade right here. Click on upgrade and then what you do is you click on reinstall automatically and it will automatically reinstall WordPress for you and you don't have to do anything. And this is also another shortcut if you want to upgrade all of your plugins all in one place. What you do is simply hit select all and hit upgrade plugins and they will all upgrade all at the same time. So that's another great thing. Now I'm going to show you how to create a favicon. I on purpose used a tool that is 100% free. It's called GIMP and it works on Macs, it works on PCs, and obviously it works on Linux computers, pretty much anything. 100% free. This is how you create it. First off, you're going to need your logo, which I have here. You're going to need to copy this logo. So select it, hit copy, jump over into GIMP, file, new. This is going to be 16 by 16. You want to click on advanced options in background color you want to click on transparency click on ok paste your logo inside here then after you paste your logo into the transparent background you want to click on file and then you want to click on save as fave a con as you can see right here dot ico and you want to make sure you click the right file type which is an ico or icon extension right like that and then click save then what you need to do is use a tool like filezilla to upload the favicon directly onto into the root section of your website and then it will automatically work on every browser and in case you don't know what a favicon is and you're wondering what i'm talking about you can see if you go to my website this is a favicon right here this is what i uploaded there it is again and as you can see all professional websites have favicons associated with them. You might also, in the heading section on your main HTML page, or on, on all of your HTML pages, you might want to put this link right here. And uh, obviously, you're going to change directory to your root directory here, followed by whatever you favicon.ico or logo.ico followed by type equals image forward slash ICO, and this will guarantee that every single browser knows where your favicon is located. And finally, people ask me all the time, how do I forward people from my old website to my new website? All you need to do is put this tag into your index.html page in the heading section. Of course, remove your site and put in the site you want them to be forwarded to. And you can see here, there's the number five followed by this semicolon. What this is saying is that you, whenever the person goes to your old website, it's gonna wait five seconds before it sends them to your new website. And you can change that to whatever you want it to be. Well, that's the whole presentation. I have one more WordPress problem solving tutorial ahead. If I still have not covered something, you have a problem with WordPress in, just leave a comment down below and I will most definitely cover it. I've made over 40 WordPress websites and I've taught over 20 different people how to use WordPress, so I'm glad to help. Till next time.